My name is Sessan Aubrey. In Thailand, a lot of people know me by my tag Geek. I'm mixed. My mom comes from the USA, my dad comes from Paraguay, and then my life started in Brazil. My background begins in a degree in anthropology, and within that, I focus on cultural ethnography rooted in art and linguistics. This has really helped me teach multiple angles of how people approach art and how that can help each student access and hear the right inspiration. For the entirety of my career, I've been both a full-time artist and an educator. This means I've had gallery shows, I've worked commissions, and I've painted all over the world while always approaching art as my personal mission to show others a way to learn about life and who they are. There is no job in the world that I love more than being an art teacher. It all begins with a growth mindset. Imagine an artwork is a process that consists of 30 steps. Often, the middle stages of artistic production are blind, messy, or incomprehensible for both novices and experts alike. Everyone has the ability to develop an artistic style, but what often hinders non-artists is their self-confidence as they get lost in the middle, around step 10 or 15. In frustration, many people abandon the technique, strategies, and intent, and they chalk it up to a lack of talent. This is very common. I used to think like that as well. When I began to make artwork, I had good mentors in my youth who helped me see that my problem didn't lie in my abilities, but rather my growth mindset. I could do anything I wanted. I just need to keep going, and I need to learn how. I remember their advice well. Nothing looks good until it's done. If you can't see it, you can't make it. So what do you see? Don't draw what you think. Draw what is there. Just put the paint where it goes. Everything is held in place by what it is not. Art is so beautiful when understood properly, as it's really just a set of skills that relate to overcoming obstacles. Art teaches you that there's always a solution. It just depends on the strategy, and strategy comes from asking questions, experimenting, and asking experts and peers for insights. Making good art comes down to a combination of two things for me, hand-eye coordination and being able to effectively analyze what you see. There are many ways to develop coordination, tracing, an exploration of tools, rotating the work appropriately to match the movements of the hand and the arm, drilling, practice. On the other side, there are many ways to develop a strong awareness of what you see. Looking in mirrors, closing your eyes or squinting, making grids both inside and outside, flipping the artwork, breaking down its solutions, finding the difference in photos, layering photos transparently, using a mindfulness practice for awareness, or simply adjusting filters and applications. Just as we learn to speak languages sound by sound, word by word, paragraph by paragraph, so too can we all learn to do art. So as an educator, my job is to help my students overcome discouragement when they encounter that obstacle. I listen to my students' struggles, and I observe where they grow stronger and where they hit walls. Each student has their own way of speaking, of hearing advice, and their own way of solving problems. When I'm most effective, is when I help my students learn to see what they cannot, and then give them the tools to produce their own interpretation of the solution. Their artwork should never look identical. It should show the artist's approaches to obstacles and their resolve to decide when the result is representative of what they can accept. The skills we learn from art can easily be applied to all other subjects at school and in life. I always felt I was bad at math until I saw how I used it indirectly in art. With sports, Creativity and spontaneity from art allow for flexibility and strategy. The structure of languages and syntax is closely related to the layering structure of most art mediums. The scientific method and its urge to find answers is identical to the pursuit of artistic planning. And an appreciation of nature and finding peace are the most common statements made in contemporary art these days. Art teaches us to solve problems when we think creatively, refine our motor skills, and practice decision making. When taught properly, art is the strongest subject, as it helps the success of all the other subjects. I am confident that when I teach, art becomes powerful in this way.